Hello and welcome to quick hit number two. We'll be talking about attributes, keys, and hierarchies in this particular video. This came from a question from one of the users of Learn Microsoft BI. Basically he said, look, I have a time dimension and I've created some attributes in it and I've added these to a user-defined hierarchy, a multi-level hierarchy. And of course when you do that, uh, you, you make it natural, you add the attribute relationships and this particular reader said that he then modified the key columns properties to make it work and that's obviously you've seen that hopefully in the uh, attribute relationship video. It's a very important point. The problem is though he now wants to take one of those attributes say quarter or month and keep it as a separate attribute hierarchy and be able to pull it over and then just see four numbers for example for quarters one for each quarter regardless of the year in which it occurred. So he wants to see it without the effects of the key columns. So how do you do that? Well, let's take a look. Okay, a quick review. Here I have a time dimension and I have created the attribute relationships so that uh, dates roll up into months, months into quarters, quarters into years. And I have uh, not set the key member or the, the key columns property. So remember when I go to the browser because of the select distinct query it sees only one quarter one, one quarter two, one quarter three, one quarter four, it just distributes them across the years. Well, now let me go add the key columns and reprocess this and uh, I'll, be, I'll be pausing this while I do that. Okay, and as you can see from the key columns property here of the calendar quarter, I have added quarter and year to this and so I've reprocessed and now when I reconnect, of course now I see all four quarters in the years. So that works great. And again, if you've seen the attribute relationship video, you know why that, that works and how it works. But now if I drop this down and I look at the calendar quarter attribute hierarchy by itself, it looks really strange. I have the number one repeated uh, five times. I have the number two repeated, the number three, the number four. And this is not surprising. It's because during the processing, the select distinct is now on those two key columns, quarter and year as opposed to just quarter. So the question was, well, okay, that's great. I understand why it works in the hierarchy, but now I want to still be able to drag the attribute over and see just the four quarters. Well, there are, there are a couple of ways of doing this. The main way, though, is just grab that quarter calendar or calendar quarter attribute again and bring it back over and add as a new attribute. Now, notice it gets a new name, but I'll simply change this to, for example, just quarter. And now I'm not going to change the key column property. I'm not going to add it to, uh, into any kind of attribute relationship, but I will reprocess. And now after reprocessing, if I go to the browser and click connect and choose the new quarter attribute, now of course that continues to work fine. So normally this is another one of the reasons why you hide any attribute if you add it to a multi-level hierarchy. So I would normally close calendar quarter so that users couldn't browse on it, but if they needed to browse by just the quarter, I've added in there. There's nothing illegal about adding a column from a dimension table as an attribute more than one time. Now let me show you another example of this very quickly and what led to the uh, user to originally ask his question. I have opened the AdventureWorks sample database uh, analysis services uh, project here. And you'll notice something about this. I have a calendar hierarchy, and so for example, here is calendar quarter. Well, I see calendar quarter over here, and they have followed best practices. You will notice the attribute hierarchy visible property is false. Now, they also, though, have some other columns in here. They have one called calendar quarter of year. Well, calendar quarter of year is visible, and this is the one that you can use to browse just uh, for the quarter. The difference that they've done, though, is that in the DSV, they actually added some calculations. You'll notice, for example, there is a calendar quarter of year calculation. So if I take a quick look at the DSV and the time dimension for this, let me zoom in here and let you see what this looks like. You'll notice that the calculation for that particular column looks something like this. Here they're simply taking the regular calendar quarter column and appending on CY 
for calendar year and then Q and then the number. So when you browse this particular dimension, you notice, of course, that the calendar quarter standalone is not available. It's here, and when I look at it here, well, sorry, that's the semester. They've put the year on the end of it. But when I look at the calendar quarter of year by itself, it's just four members, and it simply says CY Q1 through Q4. So, in conclusion, if you have an attribute that needs to be in a multi-level hierarchy and it needs a compound key in order to work that way with the, with the uh, attribute relationships to make it a natural hierarchy, you really don't often want to then use that as an attribute hierarchy. It looks strange. As you saw, it repeated the quarter multiple times when I first did it. So the key here is to simply create a new attribute. It's going to be based potentially on the same column from the dimension table or you could create a calculated column in the DSV as they did with the AdventureWorks example. But the, the, the real thing is you will have more than one attribute based on basically the same information. One attribute will go in the hierarchy, have a compound key, and will be hidden. The other will not be in a hierarchy, will not have a compound key. That's what's still visible to end users. Thank you.